I am Susan Smith Blakely. I am the author of the Best Friends at the Bar book series for young women who are interested in the law, young women who are in law school, and young women who are practicing law. And today I am in the DC Spotlight. I, I know in your book um, there's a mention of the cement ceiling. Did you yes. experience that? Well, yes, it was the cement ceiling in those days. I mean, we're still going through the glass ceiling, but there... Uh, I came along, I graduated from law school in 1979. Prior to that are the women that are the real heroes, because theirs was the cement ceiling. But by the time that I graduated, there was a virtual mandate by the government to start hiring more minorities, and women were falling into that group. Um, However, I, I went to Georgetown Law School, and, and my class graduated in 1979 was one-third women. That was very high yeah. for most schools throughout the country, but that was probably because we were in Washington, D.C. And the people that came to me and posed on me the most, interestingly, were the secretaries at the law firm. They came to me to say, Susan, you have to come back full-time. You have to do this. The you secretary. have to. Yes. You have to get that partnership because you have worked so hard for it because we need you to get that. So that was that, those were hard conversations yeah. because I also knew that I was going to have a baby at home and, and at, by that time I did have the baby at home. Mm -hmm. And I, you just who as needed much? me just as much. Yeah. Uh, you're sitting in my home now. It's not exactly accessible to... Um, bus lines to have Nanny come, and it, we're quite remote. I had all of those considerations. And then did I want to have Nanny raising your my children? children. Yeah. Those were all considerations that I had, and in the end, I decided that I was not going to go back full-time. I went back part-time, and I, I felt strongly that at some point in time, I could probably jump back in, and I could probably accomplish what at that time I thought was so important to me mm -hmm. and is important. Of being a partner in a law firm when you've worked hard is very important. Uh -huh. But I didn't do it. You didn't. I didn't do it and then my son came back came two years later and so I muddled through with part-time. Um, another thing that happened that was hard on me uh, was not only did I have to give up the partnership but then I had to give up my practice because they told me that you can't do trial work part-time. I lecture at a lot of law schools, and I will say that some of those young women still think I'm speaking to old stereotypes. Uh -huh. And in fact, I'm not speaking to old stereotypes at all. The, the, uh, the women who have experienced this throughout their lives get a bit of a chuckle out of that because they know that it's just a matter of time before these young women start to realize that there are still huge obstacles out here in the world to us. Even though we think we've got federal laws protecting us for this and that and the next thing, it's not the overt discrimination. It's not the, the explicit uh, habits of people. It's the implicit habits. Yeah. It's the ones that sometimes they don't even recognize that they uh, that they are behaving in that manner. So you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, that the students that you're encountering when you, when you go out and give speeches, they're not really aware or fully understand the, the difficulties that's going to arise when they um, get out of school. So they're saying that there aren't many obstacles, but then when they get out, they figure out or they find out that there are many. I think that's true, mm -hmm. and I think it depends upon the young woman, mm -hmm. and it depends on the law school environment, it depends on, the, uh, on her background. There are many young women who are in law school today that have pulled themselves up by the bootstraps. These women have experienced discrimination, they have experienced um, problems on jobs, they have other uh, life experiences that they bring to bear, and, and they're much more savvy, I think. The ones that, that don't understand what they're going to be up against are women that I wouldn't really expect to understand. They haven't had those life experiences. I don't judge them harshly because they don't understand, 
but I do have to sometimes say to them, I know you don't think this is going to be a problem, but just let me tell you about it in case it ever comes yeah. up. Because in my own mind, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to come, come up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like to get them prepared for those things. But it's not something that I judge them for. It's just that because of their experiences, they haven't had as much, they haven't experienced much adversity. Because you still have an old boys network that is pretty much controlling my profession of the law. And that's what they're going to find out when they get out and start practicing. You know, when somebody says to them, you know, we're going to take the clients to the cap game, caps game tonight, do you want to come along? Well, their answer should be yes. Mm -hmm. But are they going to have the same interaction with the client at the Caps game that the guys are who might really know a lot about hockey? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe so, maybe not. But that isn't as natural a setting for them as it is for the young men. And development, therefore, development of clients, is what I mean, doesn't become quite as easy in that setting. Now, I'm trying to prepare them for all of those things. Uh -huh. And as I said, the answer is always yes. Yes, I want to go. Mm -hmm. And it's easier today. It used to be... Um, I wouldn't even get invited. Probably. No, you wouldn't even get invited. Yeah. And if you got invited, you might not be able to go because some of those events were held in clubs where women were not able to, to enter. Or if they had to enter, they had to enter through the back door. And this isn't that long ago yeah. that we had things like that taking place on the main line of Philadelphia and other places that, you know, where you wouldn't expect it. But yes, it did happen.